With me now is Sean Penn, Academy Award winning actor, filmmaker, and co-founder of CORE, a crisis response organization. Uh, Sean, you've been doing some amazing work over there. Um, you're in Warsaw right now. Uh, tell us what you're seeing on the ground and uh, I mean, what stands out to you uh, after spending so much time in that region? Well, I, I, I guess, I mean, in an, a, a great oversimplification, you've got two immediate crises. One is the refugee crisis of, of those coming into Poland and other border nations. And then this horrifying thing, this horror that's going on in Ukraine. And I guess just as more importantly, perhaps, is the extraordinary courage and unification of Ukraine and of its leadership. And you're the co-founder of CORE, as we said, and, and we want to put up some information on the screen for people. If they want to donate, they can text CORE to 24365 or go online to coreresponse.org. Um, what's, what's your uh, response effort been like? And, and I mean, what stands out to you uh, when you're over there doing this kind of work? Well, because I'm in Poland, I should say that one of the things that, that stands out here is the extraordinary heart that the Polish people and, and government are showing to these, these people that have been put in this tragic position of uh, mo mostly women, as you know, uh, and their children. Uh, so that's a standout. Um, it's, again, of course, what the Ukrainians are doing. And then there are, there are all of us that are trying to partner with local organizations understand the needs here and, and be uh, and scale up our support uh, with an intensity. And the stories coming out of there, I mean, they just they just break your heart. I, I, you know, um, I, I wonder what it feels like to you uh, personally, Sean, to to live through this and, and to talk to these folks. Um, as you know, the U.S. is set to take in 100,000 refugees from Ukraine. It's a large number, but this horrific situation is causing millions of people to be displaced from their homes. Um, is 100,000 people enough, given what you've experienced and what you've come across? Well, you know, I'm not going to dazzle anyone with my, my overall policy sense of this, but I, I do believe it, it makes sense that we understand that whatever countries in the short term and the long term are taking on the lion's share of the burden, they and their municipalities directly have to have continued international support. And I have to ask you about this, Sean, because you met with President Zelensky in Ukraine right uh, when this war began. Um, he has become, and we're looking at some video of this right now, um, he has become a hero uh, to people around the world uh, for the way he's led his people uh, courageously and standing up uh, to the Russian invasion. Did you get that sense of what he was made of when you were talking to him at the time, and, and what has been your impression uh, since this war has begun? I mean, he, this is the guy who said, um, I don't need a ride out of town, I need ammunition. Yes, I, you know, I had met with the president the day before, initially the day before the invasion, and met with him again during the invasion. Uh, what I would say is I can't imagine any human being would have fully uh, known that they were born for this moment until this moment would have happened. And so I would say certainly on Thursday, I was with as moving, as courageous, as extraordinary uh, a, a person and face of his extraordinary country and people as I would expect I ever will witness and certainly that I ever have. Uh, an incredibly moving human being on this in this minute of time we're all sharing. And have you had a chance to speak with him since uh, your meeting? Yes. And how did that go? How, how was that? You know, all I'll say, I, I, I'll just for the for the, for the moment echo uh, that aspect of it. Uh, that uh, it, it continues. Um, yeah, and, and I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know the consensus with the documentary team I'm with. If I had something that I thought was more valuable to tell you, uh, you know, for the, the greater problem right now, I would. But right now I'm going to kind of, you know, refrain. Uh, I, I totally understand. And as you know, Sean, the Oscars are tomorrow night. 
Um, do you want to see President Zelensky speak at the Oscars uh, via some sort of video link? Uh, and how do you think the, the ceremony, uh, how the event uh, you know, should recognize uh, what is happening in Ukraine? What would you say, I guess, if you were there up on stage? I, I, I'm glad you asked that question because, you know, there are those, and, and, and I think it sometimes has validity, who would say that, you know, politics are for another place, entertainment is for another. I, I believe that anyone, as an audience or a practitioner of film, that understands what that expression is, that to restrict it to just film is to say it can't be on television, it can't be on the stage. To restrict it to any of those is to say it can't be embodied within a human being, that kind of nature of poetic courage and expression that film aspires at its best to be. There is nothing greater that the Academy Awards could do than to give him that opportunity to talk to all of us. And by the way, this is a man who understands movies and had his own very long and successful career in that. Now, it is my understanding that a decision has been made not to do it. That is not me commenting on whether or not President Zelensky had wanted to. If the Academy has elected not to do it, if presenters have elected not to pursue the, the, the leadership in Ukraine who are taking bullets and bombs for us along with the Ukrainian children that they are trying to protect, then I think every single one of those people and every bit of that decision will have been the most obscene moment in all of Hollywood history. And I hope that's not what's happening. If it turns out to be what's happening, I would encourage everyone involved to know that though it may be their moment, and I understand that, to celebrate their films, it is so much more importantly their moment to shine and to, to protest and to boycott that Academy Awards. And I myself, if it comes back to it, I, when I return, I will smelt mine in public. I pray that's not what's happened. I pray there, has, there have not been arrogant people who consider themselves representatives of the greater good in, in, in my uh, industry uh, that have not decided to check in with leadership in Ukraine. Uh, so I'm just going to hope that, that that's not what's happened, and I hope that everybody walks out if it is. Well, I hope you're right, Sean, and we're, we're certainly going to check into that as well because we haven't been able to uh, report on that or independently confirm that. But let me just ask you just, to, just finally, Sean, um, is there any way to put into words what you are seeing, the level of de devastation that you are seeing? Um, and, and what Vladimir Putin has done? Well, you know, I probably, your viewing audience has, has probably seen more than I've seen. Of course, you know, it's, 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 it, it's sometimes less in your face uh, from the street corner. Yeah. Uh, but what I can say is on an emotional level, you know, the, I, I, I've never been in a position of uh, what the, the investment that conflict journalists make, where they spend extended periods of time in extremely sketchy circumstances. Certainly, I've never been a soldier. And I've never been, a, 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 you know, a, a, been without the choice to leave a country that's under that kind of pressure. That said, uh, you know, I have been in some situations that, that could be c considered sketchy for short periods of time. And I've understood what it is to have an anxiety, to have a fear. In this case, on the day of the invasion, the, my, my emotional bandwidth was completely taken up with a heartbreak that was certainly immediate as it related to the Ukrainian people. But it very quickly expanded my own children to every, everybody that believes in dreaming around the world. It, it, was, it, is, it is truly heartbreaking, so heartbreaking there wouldn't be time for other thoughts. That's what I'm feeling, and that's what I'm feeling from what I'm seeing. So I, I hope that there is a, a great way to, for, to be able to articulate, for all of us to be able to articulate to everyone around the world that this can be the end of dreaming for our children.
what this does to, to the potential for any relative notion of democracy. Ukraine will win this fight, though. There's no question in my mind, Ukraine will win this fight. And the question will be, where were we when they did? Sean Penn, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for what you do. Thanks for joining us. Uh, get home safe. We appreciate it. Thanks very much, Jim. And if you want to donate to CORE, uh, as we were just uh, talking about with Sean a few moments ago, text CORE to 24365 or go to CORERespons.com. Uh, dot org online. You can also follow CORE's work on their Twitter page at CORE Response. 